Good evening and welcome to this evening's time of worship, live from St James's Church. OK, possibly not live and possibly not from St James's. I think you've got the idea by now. What I would say is if wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, put a little um, message in as to where you're seeing it, because I believe this church is heading all around the globe at the moment, which is quite a worrying thought, but also quite um, encouraging. Right, this evening we're thinking about music. Yeah, I know, we kind of do that most times you meet, but this week we're focusing on the songs that we sing and looking behind the songs we sing and learning a new song. To live without my music would be impossible to do. In this world of troubles, my music pulls me through. Uh, to quote, quote even John Miles, 1976 I believe, but I'm sure someone can update me on that. What songs move you? What excites you? What takes you somewhere? I know that uh, when I listen to Madness, I'm back in college in 1980, when I listen to Orchestral Maneuvers of the Dark, I'm running around in the 1980s with a very dodgy haircut. Um, what was the first album you bought? Mine was ABBA. Um, first single? Hmm, personally not prepared to say. First concert? Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Now that takes you back a bit, doesn't it? Now, music's quite important. It kind of undergirds everything we do. Think about um, your favourite film without the music in it. Think of Star Wars without the theme track, for example. I think about sitting in a cinema transfixed, or in a theatre transfixed, by the music of Les Mis, or singing Sunrise, Sunset, and just feeling what it's like to be in that place at that time. I've at times been comfortably numb with Pink Floyd. I had the greatest day in history with Tim Hughes. I built a kingdom with Rend Collective, and I've stood in front of a pyramid and watched Muse an electrolyte orchestra, and even a Stormzy there. You never thought I had it in me, did you? As also, um, also as well, I've, uh, I've been human with some killers. Hmm, there's a thought. I've been transfixed by the music that soars through a church from a choir. I've listened to Elgar, Beethoven, and been completely blown away by the lyrics and the songs of Rodgers and Hammerstein. And also, I go back to the Olympics, 19, 20, 2012, Emily Sanday's fantastic rendition of Abide With Me. Probably, despite everything, one of my highlights of the entire experience. Music reaches us, whether it's officially religious or officially secular. And it moves us, it changes us inside when you listen. As you wake up every morning, as we go through the day, as we come to church, what we do, the worship we have, frames our lives, frames our worship. It connects us to God. It allows us to worship him. And it comes from our hearts. Scripture says to find the music that allows our hearts to sing. And that's what we try and do. Whatever the source, wherever it's from. Music is a gift from God. And it moves us. Now, do you know what? I think I quite like music. I think I like a range of music. But there's somebody else, I think, who takes part in these services who probably is even better at music. In fact, he's much better at music than me. And spends most of his time in a loft recording stuff. And I think that's what he's been doing now. Now, we let Steve out occasionally for the odd service, go to the toilet, we give him meals. But most of the time he's up there sorting out his audacity. In fact, we'll go over to him now and he's going to chat to you about the next song we're going to sing. Over to you, Steve. Thank you. Hello. Hope we're all well and uh, surviving our lockdowns. I'm not in the loft. Um, it's way too hot up there today. And I am in between musical tasks anyway. Finished a couple yesterday, one to start tomorrow. So a day's rest. Um, Richard said talk about music. Well, um, I can't quickly tell you why music's important to me, um, only that it provides the chronology and card index to my life. It's always appropriate, always astute, and it's been a faithful friend throughout. I strongly agree with Tolkien on music, as in The Silmarillion he introduces music as being from the divine. 
And I remember saying in an evening service some time ago that I think music is a gift from God. Um, I don't think that human beings are sophisticated enough to have invented it. Um, I think that being involved with music is a bit like trying to influence the course of the streams that run down a beach into the sea. With bucket and spade. I'll let you think on that one. Quite like that. Good analogy. Anyway, today uh, I've chosen Reckless Love. It's a song by Corey Asbury and I think it's pretty much unknown to St James's, um, although obviously not to some individuals. Uh, I first heard it at Spring Harvest um, and it's been coming back ever since and I keep thinking, oh, I like that, what's that? And then going and finding that one again and I've learned it now. Um, so it's a song about love and love at all and any cost. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory. There aren't many words to it, but they are powerful words. It reminds me of all the times in my life when my faith has been weak, but that God has always come and found me again, one way or another, which is pretty amazing, really. I think you'll agree. So I hope you enjoy the song. Um, it's, it got a bit involved, um, but we're going to have something a bit simpler next week. So, song Reckless Love, and then I think Nigel has something for us. Oh, yeah. 
shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no, no wall you won't, you won't kick down. down. Lie, you won't tear down. down. Coming after me. me. There's, There's no, no shadow, you won't light up. up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. me. There's, There's no, no wall you won't kick down. down. Lie, you, you won't tear down. Coming after, after me. me. Through the sorrow, 
out of the fire into tomorrow. So flush the pills, face the fear, feel the way it disappear. We're coming clean, we're born again. I hope for lungs can breathe. Well, good evening. We've just listened to the song by the group for King and Country. It's called Burn Your Ships. And that's what we're going to be thinking about tonight. Now, I haven't got a shed as good as Richard's, uh, so I couldn't compete with him. So I've decided, as we're talking about burning the ships, to, to sit here this evening. And, and it's a bit warmer as well. Burning the ships. Where does that, where does that idea come from? Well, the idea is said to go back to Hernan Cortes, who in 1519 decided to uh, go to Mexico with 11 ships, 600 Spaniards. And when he got there, in order to motivate his people to go and find the treasure they were looking for, they, he decided that he would scupper, not actually burn apparently, but the same thing, scupper his ships so that they couldn't go back they couldn't turn back so that's where we originally get it from although some people will say the Romans also used it but where was that inspiration for Luke Smallbone from for Kieran Country well the song is about actually an addiction his wife was expecting their youngest child and was very very nauseous so it went to the doctor and the doctor gave uh, some medication. It worked well, stopped the nausea for some time. But after about six weeks, Luke Smallbone was doing a concert with his brother and the rest of the group, and he got a phone call from his wife, really worried because she found that she could not give up the tablets. She'd actually become addicted to the tablets. So he rushed back, very worried. They prayed but also went and got some psychological support for her. And after a while, that seemed to work. But the turning point, he says, in a very good video on YouTube, if you want to see it, was when she took the, the rest of the tablets and poured them down the sink. There was no turning back. She didn't have any more. And that inspired the song. Now, we've listened to the song, but sometimes you don't pick up all the words, do we? So let's just have a think. Some of the lyrics say, step into a new day. We can rise up from the dust and walk away. We can dance upon our heartache, yeah. So light a match, leave the past, burn the ships, step into a new day. We can rise from the dust and walk away. We can dance upon the heartache. So light a match, leave the past, burn the ships and don't look back. So it's all about not looking back how easy it is us sometimes we have an idea we have a, a thing we want to do or something we need to give up but we make excuses I know I do 
what if? What if I did that? What if this happened? It doesn't make sense. I can't do it. But this song is all about making that courageous step, I suppose, and then not looking back. Burning the ships so that you can move forward. You're not held back by that indecision. So for us, I suppose we've got to think about what are our ships that we need to burn? Is there something in my life, in our lives, that we need to burn those ships? Could it be a habit that we keep having? Some form of addiction, eating too much or eating the wrong thing? Something that we say we are going to do, but we don't. Could it be that we have an ambition, but we haven't made that first step? So as we reflect on that song, it's about burning those ships, not looking back over our shoulder, moving forward. And we're also reminded that Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am always with you to the end of the age. We have that assurance that Jesus will be with us as we take that step. So, whatever it is that we need to burn our ships, we go back to that original song. So light a match, leave the past, burn the ships, and don't look back. Don't let it arrest you. It's fear of failing again. If you need a refuge, I will be right here until the end. Thank you, Nigel. And now, as we continue to think of the songs that we sing, why we sing them and the meaning behind them, we look to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Place your life before God. And then we will sing the song that was inspired by this passage from the inside out. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And now let us sing from the inside out. Love 
you from the inside out. You will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fails never ending your glory goes beyond all fame in my heart and my soul lord i give you control don't you me from the inside out lord Justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside. My soul cries out, everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ending, your glory goes beyond the fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out of my soul, cries out from the inside out of my soul. At this time, many people are doing Google searches to find out about prayer. Well, how amazing to discover that it is simply talking to Jesus and sharing all aspects of our lives with him and on behalf of others. Asking him to be at work so that we can indeed step into a new day. So wherever you are at this moment, make yourself comfortable as we begin to pray. There will be some images that you may like to focus on, or you may just prefer to close your eyes, listen and reflect. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, open our understanding that you long for us to have life and life in all its fullness by renewing us, transforming us from the inside out so that we can live as you intended us to. As we pause now, show us, Lord, the areas of our lives that you seek to renew and transform. Thank you, Lord, that Courtney was able to seek both medical help and, together with Luke, pray to you to be freed from the drug addiction that seemed overwhelming. We thank you for your amazing love for each one of us. Thank you that you call us to a new life, a new day, to live in a new way. So as we pause again, show us, Lord, the things we need to leave behind. What are the ships we need to burn? What are the things we need not to look back on? Help us to let go of fear and place into your hands the things that seem to overwhelm us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to give you our hearts and souls, to give you control and to transform us from the inside out. As we prayerfully consider what life may be like as we begin those tentative steps to move out of lockdown, 
Show us how we each can live life differently, a new way, sustainably, both for our planet, your creation, and to ensure everyone has enough, so that indeed we can seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. In Jesus' name, we give you all these prayers. Nigel reminded us that we are never alone, that God promises to be with us even to the end of time. Do contact our church via email, website or Facebook if you would like any more information. We're now going to finish our time together by singing our last song. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who builds the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I
that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Thank you to the worship team and thank you to Sue for those prayers. And now a final prayer as we come to the close of our service. Dear Lord, thank you, Father, for songs and for music. I pray that in the pressures of life which come with each passing day, my heart, my soul, my mind and my body will worship you and sing so that your presence will carry me through my life both gathered and scattered. Amen. I pray for you as you go forth into this week, whatever it holds for you. Um, to quote Jesse from the beginning of the service, this week I shall mostly be in. Thank you very much. Good night. Let us know where you've watched this from and see you next week. Bye-bye.